employed in such a way that you cannot help but appreciate where it came from and how much sweat and effort went into providing it. And so by the end of my day when I put my head on the pillow, I'm tired. I am exhausted mentally, physically, emotionally. I've been through a wide range of feelings, a wide range of experiences, things that I've never ever seen or felt before in my life, and I've never felt better about feeling that way when I go to sleep. It's the best, most well-earned sleep I've ever had in my life, and when that board sounds the next morning, I'm ready. You know, what really brought me here, like what, there had to have been something saying you got in and then something else working. I had to have done something right somewhere along the lines. I was expecting Japanese style, kind of 500 years ago, boot camp monasticism where <laughs> we show up and they, they shave our heads and they tell us the monastery is full and then maybe they'll, they'll take us in a week. I was really nervous about coming here, but now that it's just, wouldn't change it for the world. You know? What is this place? How much of it is going to be lecture about how great whatever they're doing is and how much of it is going to be actual learning about Buddhism and real Buddhist philosophy and meditation? So at first I was kind of like, not, not really formative in my opinion, but just kind of uh, questioning of how good it's going to be. When, I, when we first came and like lined up and did the whole military style thing, I was like, oh, this is what they meant, you know, this is going to be pretty interesting to have to go through for a whole month. I, I guess like the picture I had in my mind was something really intense, but in a way very false. That t people have an, an image like, you'll know, get something really big, um, you'll meditate and you'll attain something very deep and all. And I come here and, and I see all, I see the reality of it and I see it's more human than I mean, what was in my mind, my feeble mind. That's how I got physically here, but spiritually, I, I don't know. I could not get through my day without Tai Chi. It is <laughs> it's so cleansing and so amazing. It just opens up my body and my mind for a whole new day of experiences.
I study religion in school, which presents like a really particular side of religion. You study texts and you study theory and doctrines. And, um, and in fact, what happens when you study it that intensely is you sort of forget that there's anything else to religion. And what this program has really made me remember is that religion is lived by people. It's not just something that you can go get baptized into, ordained into. It's like a family history, it's a cultural history, it's a language, it's a worldview. It's easy to come to this program believing that you will be able to fit in sufficiently um, and satisfy the instructors simply by performing the required ritual movements and utterances. Um, but in fact, they're going to be telling you how you should adjust your mind they're going to ask you to change your beliefs and your very attitudes, indeed, to alter your personality fundamentally and permanently. That's a very hard thing for most students to accept if they come here um, for the sake of an anthropological experience rather than on some kind of religious quest. Um, and yet, that is the essence of the anthropological experience they came here to have. First of all, I have a question that I would like to ask you. We can see what we look like when we look in a mirror. But have you found your mind? I found useful that the way that lots of people told us the first days that you had to empty your cup. So Whenever I felt like, oh, I'm tired or something, or I'm not going to listen, I, I just thought, oh, I'm going to empty my cup, and I, okay, and I listen. Emptiness, you know, or empty, shunya, shunyata. You know, talking about the idea that it is only because all phenomena.